Hi guys, Bella Luna here. So this week wanted to go over with you witching with what you got. So what do I mean by that? So, you know, on my tour and on our show, you've heard us talk about, um, you know, you don't need to buy all of the super expensive, latest and greatest, beautiful, witchy things. I mean, that's fine if you want to. Nobody's stopping you. Uh, and I'm not saying that you're any less or any more of a witch or a person if you do. But not everybody has the means to do that. Some people are just starting. Some people are in the closet. Um, some people are strapped for cash. And so I just kind of wanted, you know, to, to show you some things that I do, for example, that... Um, you know, help to save a buck or two and it's not even just about saving money because it's actually you know if you can if you can do something that you can make or um, something that you've you've created uh, visually artistically you know that that you design on your own that you do on your own um, it has a lot of meaning sometimes way more meaning than something that you just purchased straight off the shelf. So, the first few things, I'm gonna give you 10 things, actually. And that doesn't mean that it's just 10 things. There's actually quite a bit. I mean, honestly, probably say this several times during this video, but you're only limited by your imagination, seriously. So, the first few things are gonna do predominantly with things that you can find outside in your backyard, your front yard, around your home. If you live in an apartment complex, um, look around the apartment complex, go to a park. Um, there's a lot of things that you don't realize that's there. Um, and so the first thing that I wanna talk about is sticks. Just plain old sticks. So what can you do with sticks? Okay, so there's a couple of things that uh, I think I showed you um, these on my tour. But so these, um, here is my pentacle. These are sticks that I actually picked up from work one day. Um, they just looked like they would make a wonderful pentacle. Granted, it's a little curvy and crooked, but I think, like I said before, it's crooked like my past, so hey, why the hell not? Um, as you can see, I simply just attached it and bound it with various cord and string, and that's it. This cost me zero dollars and zero cents, so love that. This is a stick, I did not make this, my son-in-law actually made this and gave it to me. Um, also a stick that he found. And the reason why, and this is what he told me, the reason why he liked this is because of this little notch over here because it makes a natural place to hold and he's right. And um, which is so cool. Now, he happens to be an artist. So this did not come naturally. He did not find a stick that grew an eye. Uh, he put that on there, but the point being is that um, he found this literally just on a walk and turned it into a beautiful piece of art that is probably one of my most meaningful wands that I have. And don't get me wrong, I have some really great wands, but um, this wand is gifted and it is handmade. And so this carries a lot of energy a lot of power with it. So, as you can see, I happen to collect a lot of sticks for various reasons. This is my fire pit, um, but there's certainly all kinds of things that you can do with sticks. Another possibility is you can get all Blair Witch on yourself and you can actually take um, branches and sticks and create a crude poppet. The poppets don't have to be anatomically correct. They don't have to be a work of art. Uh, you certainly can if you want to. But if I really wanted to, you know, I could take some sticks 
put it together and make something that, you know, looks reminiscent of a body. You know, there's your arms, two legs. Um, again, it's crude. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. And I'm certainly not going to make one right now. But my point being is strapped on a butt, strapped um, with a budget. You don't have much. Um, take some sticks and make your poppet. Doesn't have to be fancy. Now, again, don't get me wrong. There's some wonderful poppets. Check out BMC's shop, Liz's shop. They sell some really adorable poppets sometimes. Um, but if you can't do that, grab some sticks. Okay, so the second thing that you can take a look at, again, focusing on the outside, are your weeds. So the average person gets really annoyed with weeds. They do everything that they can to get rid of them. Um, they're a bane of a lot of people's existence for which they are treasure. So if you're somebody who usually gets rid of your weeds, um, reconsider that. Take a look and see what weeds. And we're going to go out in a little bit and I'll show you what, um, what kinds of things you can come across. And the fun part is weeds, because they, a lot of them propagate so easily and spread so easily, um, you know, there's things that are showing up in my backyard this season that I've never seen before. So this is really exciting. So as I'm showing you them, you know, know that like I just recently recently re uh, just discovered them. So, you know, trying to do some research on them, what can I use them for? And then some of the things that I've used to you having in my backyard, I'm not finding very many. So I've had clover before. How exciting is that? I love that. Um, but uh, I grew a little bit and then they died. Um, so hoping that they'll come back soon. Some aster, um, I've had those grow before. Um, what about yellow sorrel, wood sorrel? Um, so interestingly enough, you know, some of those are not popping back up right now, uh, but some new things are. So that's exciting, new things to use. So let's go take a look. Okay, forgive me, you're probably gonna hear dogs bark a lot. My neighbor's dogs like to bark, but okay, so here are some weeds. These are actually wild fern. So um, fern has several different properties. Uh, if you burn some fern over an open flame, that actually instigates rain. Um, we don't need that right now here in Texas, so we just won't do that. Although we could use some rain right now because it's freaking hot. Um, but you can come over here. And yes, I know I need to, to mow the lawn. Let's just not talk about that. So here, here, these are really interesting. These are um, sometimes known as mini strawberries, sometimes known as mock strawberries. Um, they don't taste like strawberries. They don't grow to be as large as strawberries. Um, they actually sometimes come with a five petaled yellow flower, which those have kind of died off. Um, in terms of magical properties, not really too significant. They are a part of the rose family, so in theory, you can consider them to have some of those properties. They do have several medicinal properties. However, um, you can make some, um, I'm not sure what they quite call it, but things to, not quite salves, but you know, things to put on your skin for eczema and such. And so there's um, there's a few things that you can do for these. And yes, hi neighbor's dog. And then of course, as you can see, um, I've got some dandelions that um, are getting ready to spread its seed and start growing. Um, those are, again, weeds, but a dandelion, great for divination. Hey guys, Gypsy here for Bella's um, awesome Witching with What You Got series. So I 
want to share with you what I use a lot in my yard because as you can see it grows a ton of it and what this is this is stinging nettles um, as you can see it's all over and it's very um, easy for me to get and everything so what stinging nettles is good for is protection um, banishing and exorcism and a lust so any kind of love spell so if you need a protection spell really quick and you don't know you don't have all these amazing absolutely crazy good herbs and and plants so you can come out here and this is what it looks like these are really really big they're almost as tall as I am so um, they're also associated with Aries and fire and Mars and stuff so if you are affiliated with the, that you can use them to honor you know Aries so that's that's one of my plants so let me take you to some more also another plant that I have in my yard that I use all the time is clover or white clover is this and there's the leaves I have an abundancy of it which is really really good for protection money spells fidelity love healing so this isn't prevalent in a lot of areas in the yard naturally so if you need to do one of those there's that so there we go okay so along the same lines for number three are trees so those definitely you don't want to get rid of like weeds or some people do but um, a lot of people kind of take advantage of the trees that are in their back and front yard so uh, we'll go to the back again and I will show you some of the trees as an example of what I have um, I also happen to have a holly tree in the front um, I have nosy neighbors, so we're not going to go there and record and me talk about shit like that. So I'm just telling you, but um, it's awesome. You know, I, I get my fill of holly berries pretty much whenever I want. Uh, and there's a lot of areas where you actually find holly trees, don't even realize it. Uh, again, walk around, take a look, pay attention, but let's go all back and see what we can find. As I mentioned, trees are another thing to consider. Look around you, look in your backyard, your front yard, what trees do you have? This happens to be a crepe myrtle, really popular in the state of Texas. Um, when they bloom, they have gorgeous flowers. Right now you can see they don't have flowers, but you can also utilize the leaves in spell work. Um, but they have white flowers, purple flowers, um, different colored flowers it's absolutely gorgeous um so when they flower i definitely save those and dry those out and then um don't know if you can really see here this is a type of pine tree uh there's all kinds of different pine trees and so i certainly don't have one that looks like a christmas pine tree but it's still pine nonetheless and it's free in my backyard so I certainly utilize that as well. And then over here, I have a Texas laurel. These bloom the most gorgeous flowers. Um, and crepe myrtle, uh, Texas laurel, you know, these promote peace and love. Um, I have a, a lot of love and light shit in my house, I guess. I guess the universe feels I need to balance out because maybe I'm a little too dark sometimes. Shh, who cares? Okay.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is food. So, um, not really kitchen witchery. I mean, you know, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, it, uh, basically, you know, as you're cooking, you just think about your, um, your different goals, your different intentions, and basically the charging and activation of that will come when you consume it. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about, um, things that after you've cooked or eaten your fruit or whatnot, um, instead of throwing some of the stuff away, what you can do to save it and add to your apothecary. So let's go take a look. So here's some random things that I have that I am in the process of drying out. So when you are preparing your foods, eating your foods, think about instead of just throwing it away or composting, which is actually a good choice as well, think about saving them, drying them out, um, adding them to your apothecary. So here we have some corn husks. And that is my dog drinking his water. There he is. Are you done, Falcor? Can I keep going now? Okay, one moment. Okay, let's get back to the video. So, corn husk. So, corn husk is actually good for protection and prosperity. Um, you can make dollies out of these. You can um, hang them and to encourage protection and prosperity in the home. And then we have some corn silk here. Corn silk is actually great to add to love spells. Uh, very potent for love spells. These are the cutest little things. These are avocado seeds. Uh, they were tiny avocados, as you can see. Um, but avocado is known to be good for love, lust, and beauty work. And then of course we have some orange peel that I've been drying. Um, I meant to make these much smaller. They, these dry a lot quicker and a lot easier when you have them in small pieces because now I'm going to have to try to, um, these actually aren't even totally ready, but it's going to be a little harder to cut them up into smaller pieces. So I recommend cutting them up first while they are fresher and then let them dry out that way. But orange is actually good for prosperity, um, for abundance work, for luck and love, and also for um, divination. And then this is garlic, garlic skin. And uh, garlic skin is actually also good for protective work, for healing, and also for lust, believe it or not. And actually, it's interesting because it says when you ingest it especially, um, it's good for lust. Uh, just don't open your mouth, I suppose, or just don't breathe on the person. But, um, but yeah, these are everyday foods just in my meals. And from my meal preparation, as you can see, I have several things that I'm going to be adding to my apothecary. And um, I have a number of things that I continuously do this with. Uh, the only money that you're spending for this is the regular money that you spent on the groceries when you bought this. So do not overlook the, um, the wonderful things that you can save from your groceries. A few other things I wanna mention, um, and again, you know, if you don't have it in the house, I'm not saying go out and buy it, unless of course you want to, but if you do have it in the house, uh, you're using it for your regular food, by all means consider using it in your, in your magical workings as well. So rice, cashews, great for prosperity work. Cashew is also um, good to enhance and improve communication. Eggshells, when you are done using the eggshells, Dry them out, crush them up, and you can make yourself um, some eggshell powder. Some people know it as cascarilla powder. Excellent protective workings. 
with eggshells. Um, good old sugar. If you want to make um, any kind of sweetening spell to get somebody to um, be more favorable to towards you, good old sugar. So, you know, if you have never done this before, just take a little moment, spend some time in your kitchen, look in your pantry, look in your, your spice cupboard, and look in your fridge, take a look and see what's there. Um, it, just about everything, actually everything, has some sort of spirit, essence, um, that carries its own individual properties. Research them, and if it is something that is worthwhile to you, then by all means, use it. So, next on the list is uh, jars and bottles. So, if you are somebody that likes matching jars, matching bottles, this may not be for you, but at least even on, uh, on the interim, in the interim, if you're strapped for cash, um, or if you just like the idea of repurposing and, you know, not having to, uh, minimal waste and all of that, um, you know, this is something to consider. So, uh, I personally, and I think I've mentioned this before, I've not purchased any bottles or jars in, in quite a while, in a very long time. Uh, I, I do actually prefer to reuse and repurpose. I kind of like the um, the hodgepodge of the mixing and matching of all the different sizes and shapes and everything. I kind of think that's, that's uh, is cute. Um, but so let's take a look and uh, talk a little bit about jars and bottles. Okay, so here's a couple that I have waiting in the wings to be used. So... Um, these are, again, everything. I've not purchased these. I did purchase them during original grocery shopping. Uh, but then once it was done, then I cleaned them and, uh, prepped them. And so this one is, I think there was queso in there. This one was salsa. Uh, this one was olive oil. And this one was soy sauce. So, uh, a couple of the tops I did spray paint black, uh, just because it was more aesthetically pleasing as opposed to, you know, seeing a, the, a label on there, but you don't have to, uh, that was just a preference for me, you know, a uh, can of spray paint, about three bucks. And, uh, and so, um, sometimes I will, uh, I might use the jars for uh to add to the apothecary i might use them for spell work uh there's a number of different things you know that you can use them for uh the bottles i tend to use uh for my waters and my spell oils so this is actually ideal this used to have oil in it olive oil so i will most likely put a spell oil in here and it'll be just like old days just like old times So next on the list are, some of you are going to get squirmy, bugs. So I've mentioned before, I like to use bugs in my craft. And this may not be for everybody. I get it. But if you can get over the squirminess and really start taking a look at uh, different bugs and their uh, different properties and things that they symbolize and such, you would be amazed at how they can enhance your practice and your spell work. So um, the only bug that I don't use because I'm a little bit of a chicken is I, I, I won't touch dead cockroaches. I just can't do it. <laughs> but you'd be surprised what else I, I'm okay to touch. So let's take a look at a couple bugs. Okay, this is a dead wasp. And yes, all the bugs are dead. I don't kill them. I don't recommend that you kill them. This is when you find them having had died naturally. Um, or if somebody else, you know, 
unfortunately killed them. Maybe, uh, you know, Terminix or something like that. But so this is a dead wasp. Um, these are absolutely wonderful for baneful workings. Um, use uh, wasps in a lot of head work. I also use dead bugs in general in my death oil, but I especially use things like wasps or I have here a mud dauber, also in the family of wasps. Um, these guys are much nicer than your wasp. Uh, nonetheless, they still are of the wasp family. And I have a cricket here, a little dead cricket. Uh, these are great for workings of luck and prosperity. And then I have some moths. And I think I mentioned these very briefly in my tour. These are courtesy of Mountain Gypsy. That is right, folks. She mailed them to me. Now, that is a sister. The other thing, and before you guys say anything, yes, I know it's not a bug. I just didn't know what else category to put it in because it wasn't quite weeds or trees. Um, but, um, you know, if you look outside or as you walk, keep an eye out for birds as they lose their feathers. So um, I have a wonderful opportunity of having birds that love to shed their feathers on my property. And so I collect them. And so you can use them in spell work. You can use them to create a witch's ladder. You can use them, and yes, this is Max, always gotta be in the damn picture, really. Really? Okay. Um, you can use them in spell work, like I said, you can use them to represent the element of air. Um, I have used them in uh, one or two of my spell oils, again, to represent the element of air. So, um, yeah, keep your eye out for feathers. So the next thing are plain old simple brown paper bags. So brown paper bags, actually, um, if you look at, say, the hoodoo practice in particular, you know, they use um, torn, not uh, machine cut when, when they use brown paper bags for petitions. Uh, you can do similar. You can also if you had to, or if you wanted to, another option for poppets is to make one out of a brown paper bag. And again, I'm not gonna promise you that it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be crude, but it does its purpose. So if you're going for aesthetic, it's probably not gonna work for you. But if you're going for efficacy, it can certainly work for you. So I keep a collection of brown paper bags every time I get some. So here's my brown paper bags. As you can see, this is one I've used in the past. And you know, uh, you're kind of doing several things here. You are being cost effective, um, you are recycling, and um, you are, again, making do with what you have. So as you can see, I save all sizes, all kinds. I put them to use. No, I am not a hoarder. If I do get a little bit much, then I will just simply recycle it. I won't keep collecting them. Uh, but just a thought, you know, something to think about. So the next thing is using the internet. So there's a lot of things that are free that you can get on the internet. And so one of them are pictures, images, photos. So let me show you some of the things that you can do. So here's an example of something that I did that actually is just mostly for just a little witchy decor. And I went online and I found a bunch of pictures 
that I was looking for something, you know, that looked kind of old with a little bit of a old flair to it, ancient, not being really ancient, but kind of an antiquish flair to it. And uh, when I printed it off, I actually very carefully ripped the periphery of the images. I didn't even burn it. Um, you can burn it or singe it to give it that kind of antique look. I just simply ripped it and very finely ripped it. Um, and then I used um, just some Mod Podge to put this on an old trunk. It, this is actually not done yet. This is just the first bit. I plan to cover all of it or most of it with these types of images. But um, again, you know, these are just images that I Googled. And like I said, printed them off, trimmed them. And this cost me zero dollars and zero cents. So here's another bit of decor that I did. Again, I just went online and kind of randomly looked for pictures that I thought would be kind of cool, you know, for a little decor. Again, um, I happened to have some frames around. If you don't, then yes, you would have to purchase some frames. But um, if you have some frames laying around and you find some really cute pictures that you want to have with a little bit of a, a witchy aesthetic, you can do that. So um, the frames, I believe the set of frames cost me, um, I got uh, six frames, I think, for like nine bucks. Um, but the pictures, again, were free. And as long as I don't publish them or try to sell them, then I'm safe. I'm not breaking any copyright laws or anything. So once again, another recommendation for aesthetics for free. So another thing that you can do online is you can make symbols. Make symbols and print them off. So there's another option for printing off. So if you like making sigils, um, like printing off runes, or if you like uh, making bind runes. So for instance, if I wanted to make a bind rune of Sawillo and uh, Fehu from the Elder Futh arc, um, I can just, you know, draw something. Obviously, it'll probably look a little crude right now. Um, but voila, I have a bind rune. I can save it. I can print it off, um, hang it by my desk, um, hang it by my bed, what have you. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, obviously you can do it on paper as well. But, you know, if you want to get a little fancy with it, um, you know, there's some people that I've seen that have gotten really, really fancy with their, um, with their sigils and with their runes. So, you know, be as artistic as you'd like to be. But that is certainly another option for online. So another thing that you can get online are books. And so for any of you that are actually on Amino with us, you'll see that a lot of our communities already have links to free books that we've collected and we've collectively um, given you guys access to our, our little collections, but also there's some links that I've shared with you. And so, but let me show you some of, the, some of the things that you can do or where you can look to peruse some free books. Now, I do have to give a little bit of a disclaimer. You know, I am not encouraging you to um, not purchase from these authors. Um, this is their livelihood. Uh, for me personally, what I have found is I've used, I've used this method often to see, uh, if it's a book that I want to purchase hard copy, if I, uh, if I really want to read it and I really like the content, um, even though I have it for free online, I will still purchase the book. So I can't tell you guys what to do, uh, but I just, you know, just want to throw that out there. Okay, so one of the things that 
I like to use, or one of the sites that I like to use, is pdfdrive.com. So when you get to PDF Drive, the first thing that you'll want to do is you will want to do a search for your book. So let's say we're looking for, oh, you'll get that pop up and that really doesn't mean anything. I can close that out. So if you want to search for, let's say we're looking for a book on witchcraft, um, you'll get some recommendations that come down, but we're just going to go ahead and search for witchcraft. And then one thing, first of all, is that it says any language you'll want to narrow it down to your language of choice in my case it's english and the reason why is because sometimes so much comes up you'll be filtering through a lot of stuff that you don't understand so it just it just helps and actually that did not take so let's try that again english there we go oh i guess it did take okay so as you can see, you get all kinds of choices. So you can actually look and pick any one that you want. So just, you know, for fun, let's look at this. And on most of them, not all of them, but at most you can actually hit preview. And so that way you can even look and see if it's something that you want to take a look at or, or to download. Once you're ready to download, you will just hit the download button. And then it takes just a few seconds. And then after it's ready to download, then it will tell you go to PDF or sometimes it'll just download directly. And there you have it. And then you can save it your drive or any place that you want to save it to um, or you can just save it to your phone but that is PDF Drive the other one that I like to use is I like to use darkbooks.org this is amazing. This site is absolutely wonderful. Um, this lady here has put together a collection of literally thousands of books. So, um, you know, it's free, but of course, as you can see, you got a lot of ads and things like that, but that's what you get for the price of free. So I usually just come straight here where it says click here to see all the books. There's your ad and you can sort by different ways or you can just look at the top books. I like to sort by the categories. So if I wanted to look for something on uh, mystic and occultism, as you can see there was 415 books in there and look at all of these choices. So now some of these are not able to be downloaded and it will tell you, it will say you can only read this online, you cannot download it. But honestly, the vast majority of them you can download. So it's, it's really wonderful. So if we will take a look at, um, let's see, the essential skills of magic. If we hit download, then you'll get a little picture of the cover you'll get a little bit of information about the book and then you can choose to download the book. Again, it takes just a few seconds and once you get the link, you have, like it says, you have an hour to access the link. And there is your book. So again, it's free. Um, use it wisely. Use it well. Do not um, do not abuse it. As I said earlier, if you are able to purchase the book um, at some point and it's a book that you really like, um, 
then by all means do so because we also want to support these authors. And there you have it. The last option is using cloth. So I'm not saying that you have to go to Walmart or Joann's or whatever. I think that's what it's called. I don't sew, obviously, um, to get cloth. I mean, just looking around the house. Do you have uh, maybe an old shirt that has a lot of holes and you don't want to use it anymore? It's not really good to wear. Well, maybe you can use it for other means. Just like the paper bag, you can use it to make a poppet. You, and actually I, I made um, a little guy, again, it's crude, and I didn't tie it off or anything, so it might unravel. But um, here is the little poppet guy. Here's Mr. Poppet, uh, and made it the same way that I did as the paper bag, I just bunched it together. Um, you can actually, I'll actually take some pictures and show you how you can start it. Um, but it's basically string and uh, some random cloth. Again, not gorgeous. We're not going for pretty. But we are going for something that, you know, can certainly pass for if somebody looked at it and said, oh, look, a three-year-old made a person. But if you can say that it's a person, you know, then you've kind of done your, your job. Uh, again, it's unraveling because I did not completely tie it off and seal it. I'm just doing it just to show you what you can do. Uh, again, if you're in a pinch, this is an option. So that concludes our list. If there's something that you do that I didn't capture, then please definitely comment in the comment section. Let everybody know so that you know we can share ideas and I'd love to hear them as well. Um, I'm really weird. I wanted to stick at 10. There was something about 10 that I had to stay with. So uh, I'm sure there's more and actually I, there is more. And as you noticed, I even, you know, put the feathers with the bugs because I didn't want to do 11 because I had to do 10. But I digress. So if there's something that, um, that I missed, please definitely comment below. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and continue to listen to the Bitchy Witchies podcast. And we will see you soon. Later.